What's up guys, in this video we're going to be going over how we can add sounds to our tycoon in Roblox Studio. We are going to be adding sounds for whenever a button gets pressed and for whenever we collect our cash with the cash collector. So let's get right into that. And now the first thing that we're going to want to do is open up our workspace right here inside the Explorer. We want to open up our tycoons folder inside of workspace and open up our tycoon model. What we're going to be using inside of here is our core script inside of our scripts folder so we can open that up and we're going to be using our audio folder folder as well. So in order to actually get sounds for our Roblox game, if you aren't making your own and importing them, you can go to the toolbox right up here. And over where it says models right here, there's a little drop down menu. Click on that and then choose audio. When you select it over to audio, it should already be on sound effect. But if it's on music, feel free to change it over to sound effect by clicking this button. What this audio toolbox is, is just a ton and a ton of different sounds that you can use for your game. First off, I'm going to search for a button press sound by searching it up right here and all the results should pop up. So now what you're gonna do is just go through a few of these and see which one you like. If you hover over the sound and then there will be a little play icon right over where the music icon was. So when you click on that, you can see that it will play the button press sound. Now that's not the exact button press sound that I'm looking for, so I'm gonna keep on going until I find one that I like. So I just found one that I like. The name is cut off a little bit, but is Cartoon Bubble Button, I imagine, Sound or some other name after that. And it sounds like this. It's kind of got that little cartoony bubble effect. And I think this one will do quite nicely. So now, once we have our sound, we're going to click on Insert. And this is going to insert this sound right into our workspace. Now, we can drag the sound over to our audio folder right here. Next, we can probably rename the sound because it's got a really long name and a ton of spaces inside of it. So it'd just be better overall for scripting inside of our code if we just changed it to something like button sound. Now we just repeat this process a few times for our cash collector and for an error sound for if the player doesn't have enough money to buy the button. I'm going to search for an error sound next. I think this one will work fine, it's just the first one that came up. So I'm going to insert this one by clicking the insert button again. And keep in mind, whenever you click the insert button, it's going to insert it into whatever you have selected inside of the workspace. So at the moment, since I have our button sound selected in the Explorer right here, if I click on insert with this error sound, you can see it's going to insert the error sound into our button sound. So when you insert something, you want to make sure you're selecting the audio folder or whatever folder you're inserting this into and then click on insert and I'll insert it right into the folder instead of into one of the other sounds. Now, last but not least, let's search for a cache sound effect. This one honestly sounds perfect, so I'm going to be using this one. Once again, click on the audio folder in our Tycoon and then click on insert just like that. So now, since we have all the sounds that we're going to be using, we can close off the toolbox and let's get scripting. So we can close our audio folder for now because we're not going to be using it anymore. Now let's open up our core script. Now at the top of our script right here, there's a few things that we need to add. Well, actually only one thing that we need to add and that thing is our audio folder variable. I'm just going to come down here right below our purchased items folder and say local audio will be equal to our tycoon find first child with a capital F capital F and a capital C for find first and child and then parentheses quotation marks and then we're going to put our audio folder just like that and that will basically find our audio folder inside of our tycoon next we can go all the way down here we're not going to be playing any sound for our owner door unless you want to play a sound for that otherwise we can put our function just right here below the owner door it doesn't really matter wherever we put it so what we're going to say is we're going to declare a new function just like this so we're going to say function and then we need to give this function a name. So I'm going to give it the name of play sound just like this. Next we have parentheses and this function is going to take two different parameters. The first parameter is object and then the second parameter, so comma, 
And then this is going to be our sound ID, just like that. So now these two different parameters right here, we're going to be sending over to this function through our signal that we're going to be using later on inside of our script. So if we go to the end of this function right here and click enter, it'll drop a line and add an end just like that. Now what we want to say is if our object find first child parentheses quotation marks and then our sound, then we are going to return because we want this function to stop if it already has a sound inside of our object. We're going to drop a line once again and say else, because otherwise if our object does not have a sound inside of it, then here's where we're going to go ahead and create that sound. So we're going to say local sound will be equal to instance.new, and then we're going to put quotation marks, sound, just like that. And then at the end of our quotation marks, but still inside of our parentheses, we're going to say comma, and then our object just like that so we can parent our sound instance that we just made to our object. So now that we've created our new sound, we need to edit the properties of that sound. So we're going to say sound dot sound ID will be equal to our sound ID parameter just like that. Next, now that the sound has a parent, which is the object and it has a sound ID, we want to tell that sound to play and then we're going to check that if that sound has already ended or not. So we're going to say sound dot ended, and then we're going to put a colon wait, just like this with a capital W. And this will basically wait until the sound gets ended. Now, once the sound has ended, we basically want to destroy the sound because we have no longer a need for it. Let's break down what this code does now. So first, Right up here, the code is checking if our object has an instance called sound. If it does, then we're going to return, which if you don't know what return is, it's basically something we use inside of functions, and it's going to return a value and stop the function whenever it gets called. But if we don't provide a value, which is what we're doing right after return, it'll just stop the function and it's going to return nil. And so since we don't want to play multiple sounds at once, we basically just stop the function if the object already has a sound. But if the sound does not have an object called sound, which is what this else statement is saying right here, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sound through this variable. We're using instance.new to create a new sound and we're parenting that sound to the object that we're going to be passing through to our function later on. Next, we set our sound ID to the sound ID that we're going to be passing so we can basically pass whatever sound ID we want to through our signal later on and it'll basically use that same sound ID for the sound that we're going to be playing. Then we play the sound right here, we wait till it ends, and then we destroy the sound because we don't have a use for it anymore. To sum it all up, basically the code checks if a sound is already playing or if the object already has a sound. If not, it creates a new sound, sets, it, sets its ID, plays it, waits for it to finish, and then gets rid of it after all of that. Now let's go into our buttons function down here because we're going to be signaling this function whenever we buy our button. So inside of our last if statement inside of our v.button.touched function, here's where we're going to be playing that sound. So below whenever we move the object to the purchased items folder inside of our script, we basically want to say our play sound function. We're going to put parentheses after that. And this function is going to take, well, we're going to be passing our V, which is the object or the button, and then comma, we're going to be putting our sound ID. So we're going to be using our audio variable that we made earlier. And inside of our audio folder, we're going to say our button sound, because that's what we're going to want to pass through because this is the sound that we chose for whenever we buy our button. After our button sound right here, we want to say dot sound ID. Next, underneath our V destroy, you want to say else. So if the player does not have enough money inside of their leader stats, then we're going to say the same play sound function once again. And then we're going to take V, but this time instead of our audio.button sound, we're going to say our audio.error.error 
dot sound ID. So that's going to grab our error sound and its sound ID and pass that through along with our button to our function up here and that's going to be playing the sound. Now last and not least, we go down to our cash collector right here. I'm going to be putting this right below where we set the money value to zero and we're going to say our play sound function and this is going to be our main items dot cash collector as the object parameter and then we're going to put a comma after that and we're going to say our audio dot money dot sound id because that is the sound effect that we chose so now that we have this play sound function and the signals in all the places that we want it to let's go ahead and click play and test it out so when i go over and claim the tycoon right here let's try pressing a button as you can see when i bought that button it went ahead and played that sound effect which was pretty cool let's try out the error sound effect as you can see, I do not have enough money for the colorizer just yet, so it's going to play that error sound effect whenever we touch it. Let's go ahead and collect our cash and see if that works. As you can see, whenever we collect the cash, it plays that cash collecting sound. And now that we have enough money for our colorizer, it'll play the actual correct sound for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. See you later.